Good morning, good morning, good morning. Word of restoration. Can you go ahead and make some noise in this house? Woo! We are back again for another pre-service. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Kaylin Lyons, and I am honored to be joined this morning by my amazing co-host, Ms. Ashley Jones. Ew. Okay, good morning, Word of Restoration. My name is Ashley Jones, and I am ecstatic to be in the house of God on today. If you're happy to be in the house, one more time, make some noise. Woo! For everyone who is watching this worship experience online, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or live stream, remember to share the spirit of restoration yes. with as many people as possible. I know that there are big things happening in this house, and I believe big things are also happening in the lives of people who are connected to this house. Amen. 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 Also, as you watch today's worship experience, be sure to stay active in the chat this yes. morning. And remember that the prayer line is open. We have members who are on call waiting to pray with you and stand in agreement with you for whatever you are believing in God for. Yes, the amen. phone number is 281-431-5930, and the lines are open until 915. Amen. Ash, it's 2024. Is. And Apostle and Lady Perry have already started this new year with some amazing events that's coming up. Can you go ahead and tell us what they are? I definitely can. So the first event is the Word of Restoration, the third annual trail ride. Woo! If you've ever been a part of a trail ride, Word of Restoration style, you already know how we get down. We have a good time. We have a good, clean a good time. time. And if you've never been a part of a trail ride, W-O-R style, this is your time. The trail ride will take place Saturday, January 27th. The gates will open at 8 a.m. and the ride will officially start at 12 o'clock noon. Next up, the following two days, Sunday and Monday, we will have revival. Ooh. Now, wait a minute, because clearly something wrong with my mic. Because usually in a house of saints, when we say revival, they cut up. So we're going to try it again. The following two days, it's time for revival. Ooh. There we go. So next Sunday and Monday, revival will take place Sunday at uh, 6 p.m. and Monday the 29th at 7 p.m. I'll be there. Will you be there? Of course. So we're going to be there. So we expect y'all to be there as well. Amen? Amen. And last but not least, the Marriage Made Alive Ministry will be hosting an event entitled The Elephant in the Room. Mm. This event is for seriously dating, engaged, and married couples, and it will take place Friday, February 23rd in the zone. Now, I won't be there because you know, the, the dating pool is some shark infested waters. Mm -hmm. But I am believing that the Marriage Made Alive ministry will have an amazing time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ashley. Word of, word of restoration, please make it your attention to attend each and every event. La Apostle Lady Perry is expecting your participation. So please mark your calendars, your itineraries, your planners, or whatever you use to keep a hold to your events. I just love being a part of a church who provides something for everyone to be a part of. Me too. It makes me think about the vision of this house. Restore your lives with the word of God. And when your life is restored, you shall receive double. Now, speaking of vision, Kaylin, today is Sunday. Okay. But it's not just any regular Sunday. Do mm. you know what today is? What's today? Today is Vision Sunday. Can y'all go ahead and make some noise for that? Yes. Today is Vision Sunday. Some of you are probably wondering, what does that even mean? We're not talking about Coach V giving us all I as am. No, we don't have time for that. This is the time where Coach V laid it all out for 2024 for the vision of this house. As Apostle likes to demonstrate through the scripture, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. Let me read that again. Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. Therefore, Coach V is sharing that with us so that we can run with it to our jobs, to our homes, wherever God takes us, that we may run with, with the vision. Speaking of vision, I don't know about you or you, but I definitely have a vision for 2024. 
Now, let me tell you, I don't just have a vision. Okay. I have several okay. an abundance, okay. multitude of visions for 2024. Amen. And as a matter of fact, me and Kaylin, we're going to take just a few minutes to talk about some of our personal visions for 2024. But wait a minute. You know what time it is. What time is it? Vision seekers activate. Now, I know some of y'all looking like, why they got on these sunglasses in 32 degree weather? See, that's where you're wrong. These are not sunglasses. These are vision seekers. And why would we need vision seekers? Because with these on, we can't see anything that's going on to the left of us, to the right of us, or behind us. All we can do is face forward. And what's in front of us? The vision. Amen, amen. So we encourage you to put on yours so that way as Apostle and, and Coach V is speaking on the vision that you can only see that. So when the devil try to come in and distract you, try to destroy whatever it is, you will see what the vision is. So as I said before, me and Kayla, we're going to take just a few minutes to talk about our personal visions for 2024. But we're not going to be the only ones talking about our nope. visions. If you are watching online, go ahead and drop one or two things in the chat that you are believing God for in the year of 2024. So, Kaylin, go ahead and start us off. Yes, so I'm believing in God that I am graduating this year, 2024. Thank you. And I'm also believing in God for restoration in my family. I believe in God for my business to elevate. Go higher. Go higher. Bigger. Bigger. Amen. What about you, Ash? So I have, a, I have a couple of visions, you know, but I'm just going to talk about two. So one of my visions for this year is that by the last day of this year, December 31st, 2024, my car is going to be paid off. Amen. Amen. Woo. Because the cars are cute, but baby, them notes ain't. No, so don't. I'm believing that by the end of this year, that will be one more thing I can check off my list. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good place to clap. Amen. And also another vision of mine, I am believing that this year I will have even more hosting opportunities. So let me put y'all on game. So towards the end of last year, I just got in a little funk because of my job. I was like, I ain't gonna be able to do too much of this. We gotta do something bigger. It's about me walking in my purpose. So I had a conversation with one of my cousins and she was like, why don't you host events? And I said, wait a minute, cause you might be onto something. Cause let's face it, is it really a good time if I'm not there? I don't think so. So less than 24 hours after that conversation, I was booked for my very first event. So since, so since 2024 is the year of big, I know they're about to be more anniversary parties, more graduation parties, more birthday parties, even more prison release parties. So I am believing that this will be the year for even more hosting opportunities. Amen? Amen, amen. And so we just want to go ahead and stand in agreement with each and every person who is mentioning in the chat what they're believing in God for. So we're going to go ahead and pray us out. Father God, we thank God for this today right now. Father God, we thank God for being God all by yourself, God. God, we thank God for who you are right now, Father God. God, we thank you, God, for the vision that's being said today right now, Father God. We pray, God, that we will carry that into our hearts, God. Carry that into our, our minds, God. Carry that into our homes. Carry that into our jobs. Wherever it is that you need to carry that right now, Father God. We pray, God, we will take it into our everyday lives right now, Father God. God, we just thank you, Father God. We pray, God, that or the vision of our lives right now, Father God, that, we will, that it will speak to us personally right now, Father God. That you will align it with yours right now, Father God. I pray, God, that you will reveal and confirm the plans that you have for us right now, Father God. God, we thank you, God, for speaking to us, God. We thank you, God, for everything that you have said to us right now, Father God. God, we ask that we commit to walking into the vision of our lives right now, Father God, that it will be your will and not our will right now, Father God. So, God, we, we just thank you, God, for the vision that's being going forward right now, Father God. We thank God for 2024, that it shall be big in the name of Jesus right now, Father God. So, God, we ask God you will continue to so touch Coach me right now, Father God, as you prepare him for the word right now, Father God, that you will prepare our hearts to hear right now, Father God, our ears, our ears to hear right now, Father God, and our hearts to receive right now, Father God. So God, we just thank you, God, for the word that's going forward. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, hopefully we did an amazing job of getting y'all hyped and excited about Vision Sunday. So although pre-service is coming to an end, don't worry, because it's only about to get bigger. So with that being said, stand to your feet, make some noise, and prepare to be blessed by the tribe of Judah. That's right, you're standing to your feet. You're standing to your feet, hallelujah. 
The only team I'm on today is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Today is Vision Sunday. So God, we want to give you our best praise. Each 
Father God, if I may have your attention for just a moment, I have a few podium announcements, and then we will receive our video announcements. Attention helps ministry partners who serve in different areas of ministry. Please be in attendance for our quarterly training session on Saturday, February the 3rd at 9 a.m. Continental Breakfast, Continental Breakfast, Continental Breakfast beginning at 8.15 a.m. Amen? The following members have experienced a loss in their family. Miss Sandra Isom, the sister of Cherie Johnson and Ola Him, passed away. Services are pending. Let us keep them in our prayers and keep them lifted up as we, throughout this week and so forth and on for our other members as well. You may now give your attention to one of our screens for our media announcements. These are your announcements for Restoration News at our Rose Sharon location. It's that time of year again. Grab your boots and jeans because it's time to trail ride. Our Restoration Riders Equestrian Ministry will be hosting their annual trail ride on Saturday, January 27th here at the City of Restoration. This is a public event, so tell your friends and family members to bring their horses and wagons and come giddy up with the Restoration Riders. No registration is required. A-Rides will follow the ride for non-horse riders. It's, it's revival, revival time. Revival time. It's revival time at the City of Restoration. As we step into another calendar year, we are anticipating revival. Come out and join us on Sunday, January 28th and Monday the 29th for two nights of power pack. Power packed, fire ignite, fire igniting, and life restoring ministry. During our kickoff revival, our guest speaker will be the one and only overseer and prophet Antonio Rockmore of Powerhouse International Ministries in Chicago, Illinois. Come out and let's experience revival. Are you experiencing any grief or pain due to a loss in your life? Then join our loss and grief group sessions as you experience healing, restoration, and recovery. Are you a new member or a member who has not completed your orientation class? Then join us for the next new members orientation blitz, which will be held via Zoom. This will allow completion of all three classes in one setting. You may register online at WORIC.org under the Coming Up tab. 
These are your announcements for Restoration News at our Rose Sharon location. We are restoring lives with the Word of God. And when your life is restored, you shall have double, double, double. Awesome. Praise God. Please place within your notes these many worship experiences and opportunities, meetings. They have been planned for our spiritual growth. And we know this year we're expecting big, more than expected. Let us be intentional about being in the house of God for every opportunity that he gives us to learn and grow and do great things in the, in the world that he has called us to do. Amen. But let us not only place them in our notes, like I said, plan to attend. Apostle and Lady Perry are anticipating our participation. So let's give the Lord a hand of praise for all the great things he is doing in the city of restoration. Well, welcome. As you notice, today is a little different. It's Vision Day. It's Vision Sunday. Come on. Hallelujah. We thank God for a leader that knows how to cast vision. But we have vision in this house. Hallelujah. We would like to acknowledge and welcome those who may be con connected virtually for the first time. Thank you for connecting with us. And we also encourage you to make it a point to join us in person in worship. We want to see you. We want to love on you. And we want you to experience what we're experiencing right here. At this time, we want to acknowledge our first time visitors. If this is your very first time worshiping here with us, we would like to acknowledge you, your presence, even if you're in the overflow. Would you stand and please remain standing for just a moment? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let us rejoice for our first time guests worshiping with us. On behalf of our apostle, Lady Perry, and the Restoration family, we thank you for making the city of restoration your place of worship today. We believe God has ordered your steps and led you here because he desires to deposit something into your hearts through this ministry. The ushers have given you a two-part visitor's card. One part of that card is to be filled by, by you. And as we worship God through giving, you may place that completed portion of the card in the offering receptacle at that time. Within the next few days, an assigned staff member from our membership care staff department will contact you on behalf of the ministry and personally thank you for visiting and being a part of this worship experience. The portion of the card that you will keep is just a reminder of your, your presence here with us today. May this not be your last time coming and your last time coming to receive. As our apostle said, keep coming. Amen. Come on, let's rejoice and thank God for our first time guests. You may now be seated. And now our tribe of Judah will come and welcome you in song. Welcome to our place of refreshing, restoration, a place where you can start over. Enjoy. of Restoration. My name is Lynn Williams and this is Rita Walker and we are a part of the staff here at Word of Restoration. Today we would like to take the time to acknowledge our volunteers that served in 2023. If you have volunteered in any capacity here at the church, whether it was for an event, responding to an appeal on Facebook, or if we simply just called and asked you for help, would you stand at this time? Word of Restoration, let's give them a hand. Please know that the ministry appreciates your time, dedication, and willingness to help ensure that the different tasks are completed. Thank you once again. Also, we would like to take the time to acknowledge some of the individuals that have volunteered consistently throughout the past year. These individuals volunteered on a weekly basis and helped with day-to-day -day operations in the administrative office. And those individuals are Aldine Williams, Jr. <laughs> Ms. Angel Green.
Deborah Smith. Mercedes Casanova. Mary Ott. Sherry Richmond. And also, we'd like to also acknowledge Elder Sharon Bell. She's not here with us today, but we also want to acknowledge her as well. Let's give all of our volunteers another big hand. Thank you. Come on, let's give all of them a great big hand clap of praise. Amen. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Come on, let's. It's good to have good neighbors. Are you sitting next to a good neighbor? Nothing worse than being next to a neighbor who is unkind. Anybody ever live next to an unkind neighbor? My God. You'd be like, come, Jesus. <laughs> Well, it's so good to see you this morning. To all of our first-time guests, thank you so much for being here and making Word of Restoration your place and choice of worship on today. We're tremendously blessed to have you with us. We know you had options. You could have gone to other places, but you chose to be here. And we're, we're glad to have you here and trust that you would enjoy our experience on today. As the presider mentioned, today is... Uh, a little different. Today is our vision casting day. This is actually the first time we've done it during the, the morning worship experience. We normally do it in the evening, um, but we switched it up this, this year, and so we're doing it in the morning services. We had it at 7.30, doing it again here at 9.30, but so glad to see you out, and you get to, those of you who are visiting, you get to hear some things about, about the ministry, get to hear our heart concerning what God has called us to do, so we know you'll be blessed, and plus you'll receive the ministry of the Word of God as well. Well, just before uh, we worship God with our giving, <laughs> I want to remind you of our revival, our two-night revival that begins uh, next Sunday evening, next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock p.m., I want, look, look around, everybody just look around, just look around, look around. You see, you see all these, all these people sis in here? You see, this, this is how we want it to look next Sunday evening. Just, just like this. Matter of fact, just, just kind of see who on your row. And, and tell them, tell them I'm looking for you next Sunday evening on this row. Come on, you, come on. I, I grew up in a church where you had, you had a, a row captain. And so, come on, so I need somebody to be a row captain. If you, if you have to take a picture of them, take a picture. <laughs> but, you know, so we're, we're kicking off with the revival next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. We're going to have an amazing time. Uh, Apostle, overseer, prophet Rockamore is going to be here with us. Uh, he's been with us before during our women's convention. And boy, he, he closed it out. And so we're going to be blessed. Amen. We're going we're gonna to be blessed by this man of God and by his ministry. So I'm excited about having him here with us uh, next weekend. And then, of course, also next weekend. Now, it's going to be Sunday evening at 6 and Monday evening at 7. 6 and 7. And so, but be here both nights. Let's, let's hang in there. Let's hang in there. Let's start strong and what? Finish strong. Let's finish strong. If you have an empty chair in your area next to you or whatever, just lift your hand. We have people trying to get in, and so we want to get as many people uh, as possible. And, and so, yeah, just raise your hands, and the ushers will seat someone next to you. Um, that person may be carrying your blessing. And so you need to go ahead and just let them, let them sit next to you. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> And so, thank you so much. Um, but yeah, so uh, Sunday evening and Monday evening. So let's be here, and it's revival. We're going to be blessed. We're going to have a great time. Now, 
Uh, Lady Perry, keep Lady Perry in your prayers. Uh, she, she's out this week on uh, just a vacation. Uh, she's on a cruise. She's on a, she's on a cruise. Yeah, she's on a, she's on a cruise, and so she, she's on the water. She's having a good time, and so she'll be out this week. So keep her and, and those she's with, keep them all in, in your prayers. So remember them in your prayers. Amen. And uh, now, since she's out, since she's out, I want to ask you something. I want to ask you something. Now, next Saturday, February the 3rd, is Lady Perry's birthday. Next Saturday, uh, not this Saturday, but the Saturday after that. February the 3rd is her birthday. So on the 4th, which would be that Sunday, I'm asking those of you who will, I'm asking you to shower her with gifts, if you, if you will be so kind to do that. Now, <clears throat> now, those of you who know Lady Perry, she don't, she, look, I've been married to her for 33 years, and she don't, she don't ask for much. She, she, she does not ask for much. She, she, does, she does not ask for much. And so, but, you know, and so, you know, when you, when you have someone who really doesn't ask for much, you really don't mind being a blessing to people like that. It's, it's, it's people who, who dig. They got, they got a name for them, you know. You know, they got a name for them. But it's, it's people who dig where, you know, you just kind of let them make it. But, uh, but I'm asking you to be a blessing to her. Uh, and so, you know, gifts, just shower her with gifts, whatever's on your heart to do for her whatever gift you want to give her, however you choose to honor her, I'm asking you to do that. It would really bless her heart to do that. And so, uh, you know, you guys show love to Apostle all the time, and so I'm asking you to do the same for Lady Perry. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. <clears throat> Are you ready to give? I'm ready to give because I'm ready to get on with the vision, talk about vision, and, and put some things before you. So let's prepare to give. Come on, let's get excited about giving. God loves cheerful givers. God loves cheerful givers, and cheerful givers what? Love, Love giving. If you're giving by envelope, just raise your hands, and the ushers will come and assist you and get an envelope to you for your giving. They'll get an envelope to you for your giving. Now, those of you, and just keep your hands lifted, they're coming. Those of you who are giving electronically, uh, all those ways and methods for giving will be placed on the monitor on the screen in front of you for your giving as well. Now when we give, we give the tithe. The tithe is 10% of our increase. Now the tithe is not, is not the pastor's idea, it's not the minister's idea, it's not the church's idea, it's not the board's idea. Tithing is God's idea. It's God's idea. Abraham, who is the father of faith, he tithed, and he tithed many years before the law. Uh, tithing was before the law. Tithing was incorporated into the law, and tithing extends beyond the law. And so 10% of our increase, God lays claim to it. And, you know, I have been married going on 33 years, and in the 33 years my wife and I have been married, we missed tithing one time, one time. And the one time we missed it, we had left our checkbook somewhere, uh, left it at home or something. And so, but we, we made sure we gave our tithe when we returned with it. But, you know, the Lord has really blessed us. And, and God said he would do that when you partner with him where the tithe is concerned. Amen. And so, so when you tithe, and here's what God said. God said, if I be a father, he said, then where's my honor? Where's my honor? And so we honor the Lord with our substance. Everything we have comes from him. How many know that? Every, everything we have, it, it comes from him. You don't have anything that did not come from him. Uh, the Bible said it wasn't your hands that's gotten you your wealth, but it was the Lord who gave you power to get wealth. So without his power, you wouldn't be able to achieve what you've been able to achieve. Amen. And so let's honor the Lord this morning with our substance. Uh, we give offerings, and then also we give uh, love gifts. We give love gifts to our pastor. 
that's for the support of my family and I. That's one of the ways we give here is giving to the pastor for his, his support. I met a young man yesterday. Met a young man yesterday. I had my grandgirls. I had three of my grandgirls yesterday. I had three of my grandgirls yesterday. And so I took them to breakfast. Took them to this, this place that I, I like to go to for breakfast and took them there. And I met a young man there. Met him, he and his wife, and his children. And, and he just started talking to me, just said something casual, just kind of making conversation. And we just kind of ended up talking. And so, and come to find out, and he, he asked me what did I do, and, and he told me what he did. And he was driving, um, he, he's the driver for uh, the Metro Lyft, the Metro Lyft. And, and there's a person that he drops off here who volunteers at our staff, Miss Mercedes. I thought I saw Miss Mercedes here. Uh, Miss Mercedes, I ran into Pastor Bryant. He drops you off here. And so he started telling me about it. You know, I dropped somebody off at that church during the week. And we were just talking. And, and he said when he dropped the person off, he would always say, I would love to meet the pastor of this church and just have a conversation. So here we are in this restaurant, and I'm talking to him and just begin to share some things with him for some things that he's involved in. And so we're sitting there. We're sitting there eating, and then he comes back and he says, um, he says, I've, I've taken care of your, your food. I've taken care of your food for you. And I said, oh, man, you know, appreciate it. Break, uh, you know, bless you for doing that. And then, so then I knew that my tip would go up for the person who was waiting on me. And uh, they did a tremendous job. And so always when I'm with my grandgirls, always like to show them how we don't tip we bless we stopped tipping a long time ago we don't tip we bless and so always like to show them so the young lady who was waiting on us uh i, I pulled pulled some out for her handed it to her and she jumped back <laughs> she did she's like what is what is that what is that i said this is this is for you she said they paid for your food i said no this is this is for you she oh <laughs> But I, I mean, you know, see, God loves cheerful givers, you know, and, and you have to learn to just be a blessing to people. Stop, stop penny pinching, you know, just, you know, trying to, trying to find reasons for not to bless somebody. Well, you know, the, the food was cold, but your plate clean, you know, <laughs> but be a blessing to people because it'll come back to you. Amen. Are you ready to give? Let's, let's give. Are you ready to give? All right. Raise your, raise your hand if you have an envelope. Raise your hand with that envelope. If you are giving using your electronic device, just, just raise that device. If you've already given or you're giving at another time, then raise your hand. But everyone should have their hands lifted or hand lifted. And we're going to confess the word of God over our giving this morning. If they would put it on the screen for Ready? Let's read. I am a cheerful giver, financially supporting the work of God. Jehovah Jireh is my provider. I honor him with my substance, and I give to him from my increase. I return the tithe and give offerings. I live under an open heaven. God pours out to me a blessing that I don't have room to receive. As I cheerfully give to God, he causes others to give to me. I declare my needs are met, and I am blessed with more than enough. I am blessed in giving and shall be increased in receiving. God is making me a thousand times more and blessing me as he promised in Jesus' name. The brothers are going to come and they're going to receive your gifts. To our guests, if you've completed that card, place it in the receptacle so we can respond to you. And 
Let's put our hands together and bless the Lord. Because it's Vision Day, the choir will not be singing this morning, so we're going to move on. We have some other things planned, but you're going to be blessed anyway. At this time, we are now in the hand of an announcer. Sing it. Our vision is. Our vision is. Restoring life. Restoring life. 
to members, partners, and guests, welcome to our 2024 Vision Casting Gathering or our Vision Camp. I am Apostle Charles Perry Jr., AKA Coach V, and the V stands for vision. Now we all have a part here today. My part is to cast vision and your part is to catch it and run with it. And together we will continue to witness the God-given vision of this house come to pass as it always has been. I need you to catch what we will cast on today. I need you to say I'm ready. Say it again. Say it one more time. Allow me to pause for a moment and just give some public acknowledgement, appreciation, and accolades to all of you who have always supported and continue to support this ministry and the vision in so many different ways. May our great God increase you, may he expand you, and may he establish you in all of your personal endeavors and vision. Remember the word of the Lord says, whatever good you cause to happen for one, the Lord will cause the same to happen for you. Our vision is restoring lives with the word of God. It is a vision of reconciliation and restoration as we act on behalf of God's kingdom as restorers of the breach. Our vision is also intergenerational where your entire family can be touched by the gospel of the kingdom of God. And lastly, our vision encompasses the assignment to build God a city, the city of restoration. And we are watching both of those pieces come to pass. Engage the vision by embracing the vision. Embrace the vision by getting involved as we are restoring lives with the word of God. Now, Proverbs 29, verse 18, just the A portion says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Say no vision. For any vision to be carried, it must first be cast, made clear, and then caught. Now, this is the year of open doors. And because it is, I decree, that God is opening uncommon doors for you and you will find yourself in favorable places that you would not have even imagined you would be there. With open doors, the Lord impressed upon me to prepare you for big. Now big being more than expected. Now listen, I speak net breaking, boat sinking, and boat feeling results in your life. Somebody shout, I receive that. <laughs> Glory be to God. Now, time will not permit me to share all that we will do this year. However, I want to give you a snapshot, just a, uh, a bird's eye view of some things that are to come. I want you to place these things on your calendar and I want you to make plans to attend. Now, I'm currently sharing on Sundays from the subject, be it receiving more than expected. Now, to experience what's being shared, we must part ways with small and prepare for big in our expectations, in our excitement, and in our energy. Now, I need to remind you that you are deceived if you only expect big to come to you and big never goes from you. Just like you want others to do things big in your life, whose life are you doing big things for? And I am on an assignment to prepare you for big. Somebody say I'm ready. Now as you prepare for big this year, we are incorporating a two night revival. Say it's revival time. And the theme of this revival is the true worshiper. You know, John recorded Jesus saying, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit 
And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. To experience big more than expected, three things must be a priority for us. First, the word of God has to be a priority. Second, the worship of God must be a priority. And then thirdly, the work of God must be a priority for us. Now, I guess for these two nights of revival is none other than overseer and prophet Antonio Rockamore of Powerhouse International Ministries in Chicago, Illinois. The revival will be on Sunday. Matter of fact, it's next Sunday. It's going to be on Sunday the 28th at 6 p.m. and Monday the 29th at 7 p.m. And I'm looking for you in the house. I want you to be here to experience revival. Now, February, write these dates down, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th, Lady Perry and I, <laughs> we're going to facilitate our Winning Wednesday Bible class together. The topic of discussion will be the danger of Delilah's lap. <laughs> Listen, you want to be online. It's going to be online for this salacious conversation that we're going to have together. Now, let's talk about all of our enrichment, development, and supported ministries and fellowships. And, and I appeal to you to take advantage of these things that are being offered, such as Created Young Adult Ministry, MMA, which is Marriage Made Alive. Matter of fact, your first event is going to be next month in February entitled The Elephant in the Room. Connection Entrepreneur Ministry. Then there's the Grief Share. For those of you who have experienced loss and you need that support, that ministry is available. Financial Peace University to help you get your finances in order. Distinguished 55 Plus, Triumphant Women of God. Now, Lady Perry and her team, what an amazing 2023, but she's looking ahead to a variety of events for growth and connection. Then there's the Timothy Group, where the ministers of the gospel here, they're being developed, they're being trained, and they're being sharpened. And then we have the 400 Men's Ministry. This year, our focus is moving men beyond excuses. Those things that are hindering you from being successful across the board. Now, our first meeting and fellowship, brothers, is going to be held in February, followed by uh, an eight-week Bible class entitled No More Excuses. But, brothers, I need you to mark your calendars for July the 15th for a leadership training for men with former professional baseball player, coach, and manager, Bo Porter. And I need every man to be in the house. Brothers, say this with me, no more excuses. Then there is the solo single ministry. Uh, I have a special announcement for you. This year, we are hosting the One Night Stand Singles Tour with Dr. Aura A. Vernon of the Word Church in Cleveland, Ohio. I've spoken with this man of God. He's excited about coming to the city of restoration. Watch this clip. When your heart is broke, your head don't work. Woo! Singles, I said what I said, and I have a lot more to say. Second biggest choice you will make in your life is who you say I do to. Don't hook up with no sister that you don't want to touch, lick, smell. Don't marry her if you're not feeling that way at the beginning. Other than good sex, how could you help me? Everybody want to sleep with your broke behind? You got to get you a home, my brother. You got to work on yourself. You're in a season of singleness. Don't miss the One Night Stand Singles Tour. Come into a city near you, whether you are single and seeking, single and satisfied, or even single and sinning. This is the tour you cannot miss, and the truth is this. Most of the teaching I've heard in secular spaces about being single was just not righteous enough. Most of the teaching I've heard in sacred spaces was just not real enough. During this tour, we're conflating the two. It is my opinion that the greatest choice you will make in your life, with the exception of choosing Christ, is who you say, I do to. It's a long, laborious existence 
to be laying next to somebody for life that you can't stand. It's better to be alone than married wrong. Tell every single you know, don't miss the one night stand coming to a city near you. Remember, it's the one night stand because when you wake up in the morning, I'll be gone. Now, singles, I know you are in great anticipation. This event is going to be amazing. It's going to be held now on Friday, March the 8th, and I want to encourage every single person, grab your single friends, your co-workers, and family members. I want you to be present in the house as we experience the ministry of Dr. R.A. Vernon. Now, guess what else is happening in March? Now, you know, March is exciting for us because we're celebrating our 23rd church anniversary, 23 years of restoring lives with the Word of God and building God the city, the city of restoration. On Sunday, March the 3rd, we will celebrate doing both our 730 and 930 worship experience, thanking God for another year of restoring lives. I'll see you right here. Now, beginning Wednesday, mark this date down, beginning Wednesday, March the 13th, we are marching into live and in-person Winning Wednesday Bible study at 12 noon and 7 o'clock p.m. Now, 12 noon Bible study is going to be held in the chapel at the RCLC, and the evening Bible study is going to be held in the fellowship hall. Now, both Bible studies will be a time of learning, a time of study, and a time of growth. So come prepared to grow. Let me briefly talk about the development of gifts within the next generation, such as chosen generation nursery ministry. That's where our small babies are. Then there is royal priesthood children's ministry. That's our elementary grade kids. And then we have peculiar middle school ministry, as well as GHN, Generation Holy Nation High School Ministry. Now, might I add that partner increase and involvement, uh, as well as participation, are vital to the life, the effectiveness, and expansion of these areas of ministry, and they solicit your partnership. Come join us. Hi. Good morning. Welcome to Royal Priesthood Children's Ministry, better known as RPH. I'm Dana. Good morning. I'm Vivian. Do you love sharing the word of God? We have the perfect place for you. If you have a heart to serve children in grades kindergarten through fifth grade, we would love for you to partner with us in RPH. With your help, we can open our doors to more of our WORC children during the service. We've already been blessed with amazing children. Now we just need amazing you. Hey, make a decision today to join our youth ministry, which consists of Generation Holy Nation High School Ministry and Peculiar Middle School Ministry. We would love to have you. And as the partners say in our youth ministry, we are better together. Join us today. Now, the benefit of partnering in these areas, they're countless. Uh, one is it allows the ministry to be more effective in providing age-appropriate ministry. Uh, the impact of children and youth hearing and receiving God's Word for themselves. As parents, you get to enjoy the Word of God, receive what God has for you with the comfort of knowing that your child is naturally and spiritually cared for by a team of nurturing and skilled volunteers. Knowing children and youth are growing in the Word of God as well as in their relationship with God. And then we can move to providing more services, sessions, and activities for our children and youth. Remember the word of the Lord that was spoken in 2013, that the children and the youth are the harvest. And so we must continue to plant and water so we can see that harvest come forth. Now, I cannot stress the value of increasing the partnership of our Ministry of Health's department. You know, we have so many different areas of ministry where an individual can get connected and serve using the gifts and the grace that God has entrusted to you. Listen to me. 
The weight and responsibility of ministry never changes. I'll say it again. The weight and responsibility of ministry never changes. However, with more partners, the distribution of the weight, it gets shifted so that the load is not carried by just a few individuals. To whom much is given, God requires much from them. Let me say this to you. You belong here. I'll say it again. You belong here. You fit. You're needed. And there is a place here just for you. Now, I want to make sure you give attention to all of the announcements, both podium and medium, uh, because all Ministry of Helps recruitments and meetings and training, they're already scheduled. Matter of fact, next month, we're having our first training for MOH for the year. And then also the appreciation of Ministry of Helps has already been scheduled for December the 6th, that's a Friday, where we're going to have appreciation. Also this year, we will have an ordination for, for pastors, for elders, for ministers, as well as for deacons. And we're training them and finalizing that training process right now. Now, lastly, our faith project for 2024 is the Restoration City Plaza. Now, this retail space will provide a place for people to shop, to socialize, and access services within the community. Now, while this facility will bring businesses to the City of Restoration, it will also create jobs and opportunities and services for those in the community as well as bypassers. Now, in September of this year, by the grace of the Almighty God, I will make 40 years of preaching the gospel. That's right, 40 years of ministry and carrying the word of God. We're having a gala, so look, I need you to get your gowns out. I need you to pull those tucks out, brother. Get your red bottom. Save the date for Saturday, September the 28th. We'll be downtown Houston. It's a gala affair, and I look to see you there. But I got to get out of here. But before I go, I must let you know that we are restoring lives with the Word of God. And when your life is restored, you know what happened. Help me close it. You shall. Come on. Have double. This is Coach V, and I'm out. Amen. Can we... Thank God for our media department. They did, they did an exceptional job. I had a couple of emergencies uh, this week, and so what it did, it pushed back when I was scheduled to record. So I did not record until Friday evening recording Friday evening, so, and they took uh, up to, you know, this morning, putting everything together, but they pulled it off, and they did an exceptional job, and so can we thank God for, for our, our team. I want you to pay attention. Of course, you'll hear a whole lot more about a lot of things that's going to happen this year that we're going to be doing. This is going to be a big year for us. A lot of things that's in our hearts to do that we're going to do. And I believe it's going to bless you. It's going to bless your families. And so as we continue to touch people and restore lives with the word of God. You know, what happens many times in places like this, you know, many times you walk into a place like this and feel like, you know, they have everything that they need. You know, they don't need help over there. And you know, it's a little big, this, that, and the other. You know, whatever your position may be. But when God sends you to a place, it's because God wants to use you in that place. God sets members in the church as it pleases him. And so God has a place for you. So ever walk in a place and feel like you don't belong. The mere fact I'm in the room, I belong. And, and so God opened the door to put me in that room. But fear will cause me to not tap into and access what it is that God has given me for that house. Amen. Well, go ahead and stand to your feet and we'll get started this morning. Um, I'm really not 
really teaching. I just want to talk to you since this is, is vision, but, but I have some things I'm going to share that I believe is going to be very important for you. If you're able to stand, you should be standing in honor of the reading of God's word. Two passages I want to read this morning, uh, Proverbs 29 and verse 18, and also Luke chapter 10 and verse 30. Luke chapter 10 verse 30 is a very, <laughs> I would call it even unorthodox passage to take uh, in talking about vision, but as we unfold it, uh, you'll be able to be able to see where we're coming from. But in verse 18 of Proverbs 29, it says, where there is no vision, say no vision. No vision. Say it again. No vision. What happens where there's no vision? The people perish. Where there's no vision, look who suffers. The people. And many times, if you're in a place where there's no vision, you don't even recognize the direct impact it's having on your life being connected to a place where there is no vision. So he says, where there is no vision, the people perish. If you look at Luke 10 in verse 30, it says, And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment. They took his clothes from him and wounded him. They hurt the man and departed, left him, leaving him half dead. So you may have your seats in the, in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much. I'm talking from this, this thought this morning, catch the vision. Say catch the vision. Catch the vision. It is important, and I want every man to hear this, it is important, men, that you take the leadership role to cast vision to your family. Every year, uh, where you're going and, and what you're planning and what you're wanting to do and where you're wanting to lead your family that year. You plan your work, then you work your plan. Uh, but leading your family, where are you going? Where are you going? God's giving you a spouse. Uh, God's giving people in your life. But what are they going to help you do? Where, where are you headed? Where are you going? It's the responsibility of the man to provide vision for, for that family and for that house. Catch the vision, and those individuals in that home should catch that vision and run with it. So my objective this morning is to encourage you, to encourage you to be all in, to fall in, so we all win. Say all in, all in. fall in, all in. We, all win. we all win. And so that's my objective this morning. So I want to persuade you, I want to inspire, I want to stir you, I want to stimulate you to be all in, to fall in, and so that we all win. In the year 2012, the night before Christmas Eve, the New York Giants were seven and seven, having lost five of their last six games. That night during the team's chapel meeting, the team chaplain had invited a friend of his to speak to the players. The gentleman's name was John Paul Gonzalez, a ninth grade teacher and speaker. Though he was a teacher of youth, that night he became a teacher of giants. His speech was from two words, all in. Say all in. all in. He had no idea what he was going to talk about. And then uh, as I was listening to him when they was interviewing him, as he stepped into that locker room, he stepped into that area to talk to those men. And he was looking at all the stars and all these players that he had admired from a distance. He had no idea what he was going to talk about. And he decided to talk about all in. When you listen to the players from this, you can Google this, when you listen to the players, when they talked from this, they talked about how those two words, all in, changed their lives. Not just as athlete, but also as individuals. And watch this. The next day, the Giants, remember they lost five of their last six games. They're seven and seven at this time. After the speech, 
the next week, the next, the next day, the Giants defeated the Jets 29 to 14. The players credited their win to being all in. The following week, they defeated the Cowboys, punching their playoff ticket. In the first round of the playoffs, they beat the Falcons, then went into Lambeau Field and eliminated the number one seed, 15 and one Green Bay Packers. They became the NFC champions by a win over the 49ers in overtime. Then on February the 5th, 2012, they became Super Bowl champions with a 21-17 win over the New England Patriots. Two words changed their lives. They decided to be all in. All, say all in. All in. Fall, in. Fall in. We all win. This phrase, fall in, it's, it's a military term. Uh, those of you who have served in the military or if you're currently serving in the military, you've heard this phrase, fall in. Uh, this phrase is normally uh, given by uh, a sergeant or some kind of superior, someone who's in authority. He walks into an area and if those who are there, those soldiers, if they're just doing a variety of things, doing different things, no matter where they are. When that sergeant, when he walks into that room and he says, fall in, no matter what you're doing, you stop and you fall in and you come into alignment with that sergeant, with that individual who is in command. And you don't fall out until he says so, until he gives the command. I'm here this morning as your apostle, as the pastor of this local church, as the visionary here, as Coach V, to say to you, not only all in, but I'm giving you a command this morning to fall in. I know you have a lot of things going on in your life. Everybody's busy. Everybody's busy. Everybody has life outside of the things of God, outside of church, responsibilities, obligations, demands, businesses and things like that that we have going on family children here there everywhere I know all of that but the scripture still tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things bad necessities will be added unto us that's Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33 anybody still believe the Bible all in, it means 100% dedicated to the team. When they interviewed many of the Giants players, as I was listening to uh, them being interviewed, and the question was asked to them, why do you think your season turned around in one night? He said, because of what we heard, we decided we were going to be all in. Then the question came, were you not all in before? And the answer from many of them was, I probably was not because I never thought about the two words. But now that I've heard it, I'm all in. And I believe today, after you hear what it is that I have to say, that you would also hear the Spirit of God. And you would make a decision that you're going to be all in. Because many of you sitting here listening to me today, you know whether or not you're all in. And so I believe after today, you'll make a decision in your heart to be all in. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, <clears throat> when we are all in and when we fall in, we all win. When you talk about all in from the kingdom of God and a kingdom aspect, we're talking about giving service to the Lord, giving service to the house of the Lord and giving service to the vision of the house that God has connected us to where we benefit for our families. In other words, I'm talking about no longer deliberating, no longer halting between two opinions as to what 
I'm going to do. Seem like we're so quick to decide so many other things that we're going to do, and then the things of God kind of get just, just hanging in the balance. We're still trying to decide what we're going to do when it comes to the things of God. Many times we want God to always respond to us, but we don't like to respond swiftly to God. Amen. So no longer deliberating, sitting on the fence, no more delaying, no longer contemplating, no more in the stands, but we're getting on the field. Uh, no more uh, receiving, 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 and just getting what I want from a local church and a ministry, but then not having a contribution to that local church. Amen. No more just being attached but not really being aligned. You know, your automobile, you know, your, your front end can be attached, but that doesn't mean it's aligned. Amen? So in keeping with uh, the objective, I want to encourage us this morning to be all in. I want to encourage us to fall in so that we all win. Everyone likes to win. Everybody likes to win. I'm going to try this side because they're thinking about it. <laughs> you know, I, I might. I'm not sure. No. Everybody wants to win. Nobody, wants, nobody likes losing. Right? Nobody, nobody really likes losing. Nobody likes stagnation. Nobody really just enjoys Stagnant. Even the stagnant person wish they were somewhere else. But we have to, I know you're ready, <laughs> but, but, but we, have to, we have to make sure that we're doing our part so I can get the fruit and the benefit of what I'm believing God for. Genesis chapter 11, if you would go there right quickly, Genesis chapter 11, and then we'll look at these two passages that I gave to you. We have to open those up. But in Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11 provides for you and I what I call a model of what all in looks like. A model what all in looks like. This, these individuals in Genesis chapter 11, they were all in what I call fall in, and they were all winning. So much so that it got God's attention. It captured God's attention. Watch what it says in verse number 1 of Genesis chapter 11. It states, and the whole earth was of one language and of what? One speech. You know what it sounds like to me? They were all in. They were all in. One language, one speech. No division among them. One language and one speech. This is key for even your, your, your home, your own personal individual context. One language, one, one speech. I'm going to drop to verse 3, it says, and they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. It says in verse number 4, and they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. They built it. They were all in. They built this city. They built this tower. It got God's attention that he came to see what it was. Now, the context of that scripture, of course, the reason God stopped them, um, and, you know, that's not the what we're talking about this morning, but I just want you to see the principle, the principle of being all in. We see this principle of being all in, and then watch what the Lord said. Watch what the Lord says in verse number six. And the Lord said, who said? The Lord, the Lord said, behold, or look, the people are all in. The people are all in. They have fallen in. And they are winning. He says they're all in. The people is one, and they have all one language. That's unity. And this they begin to do. Watch this. This is God talking. And now nothing 
would be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. The Bible says in the next verse, though, God confounded their language. Because once he confounded their language, then he was able to stop them. Now, but I want you to see this principle here that when you're all in and when you fall in, we all win. The children win. The nursery babies win. The youth win. The singles win. Everybody win when we all fall in. Amen. Amen. Come on, say, I want to win. Tell the person next to you, say, I want to win. Tell them, say, I need you to help me win. We all need each other. We, we, have, we have to get out of this thing that, you know, you know don't, don't listen to people talk about they don't need anybody. Yeah, you do. But I don't need no, yes, you do. You just don't know any better. You do need somebody. Amen. We all win. I'm reminded of another story in Acts chapter 16. And, and the Bible said, Paul saw a vision in the night of a man in Macedonia saying, come over here and help us. And the Bible said, those who were with Paul said, when Paul saw the vision, Paul saw the vision, the people said, when he saw it, now how did they know what Paul saw? He communicated it. It is the leader's responsibility to communicate the vision and to be clear with that vision. So Paul communicated that vision. They say when Paul saw the vision, immediately, somebody say immediately. immediately. It says immediately. We didn't, we didn't deliberate on it. We didn't drag our feet on it. When I saw the vision, when I saw where Paul was going, when I saw what the Lord had showed Paul, it says immediately, suddenly, we endeavored to go into Macedonia, surely gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. That lets us know they jumped all in. They were all in when Paul saw the vision. And there are some of you here today. You've been here, you've been coming here, but you hadn't gotten all in yet. You hadn't gotten all, all in yet. And we just, we're just having a conversation. This is a coach talking to you. This is your apostle. This is your pastor talking to you to let you know. You, you know you hadn't been all in. But the purpose of the day is to get you off the bench and get you in the game. I'm not saying everybody has to, everyone has to be in the choir, everyone has to serve every Sunday, everybody has to. No, that, there's so many things you can do here. There's so many gifts that God has given you. So many talents that you have. There's so much that you have to offer. Could it be that your church is waiting on your gift? Just waiting on your gift. Amen? Amen. Come on, say, I have something to offer. And many times we talk ourselves out. Like you don't belong or like I don't have anything. To, well, you know, those people, you know, they're they not, they not going to need me, need me down now. No, well, you should have, the Lord should have told you that before you came. <laughs> but see, you make that up in your own mind. That's that inferior thinking. And inferior thinking that you don't have anything, you don't have anything to offer because you're looking at everybody else and you feel you don't measure up to somebody who's sitting next to you. The person sitting next to you has nothing at all to do with what God has put on the inside of you because you have, you have something to offer that even I may not have to offer. And that is the beauty of, of difference and it's the beauty of variety because you have something that nobody else has. But you will sit on it because you don't think you belong. Living in inferiority. Amen. Let's look at Proverbs 29, 18. So, so we, we move on. Proverbs 29, 18. My wife don't get back till Friday, so. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm good. You know, we can, we, can, we, can, we can do a dash some food in here. <laughs> All right. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Just because you see a scripture in the Bible, that doesn't mean that's where it needs to stay. Proverbs 29 and 18, watch this, is for your house. What is the first word in Proverbs 29 and 18? Where? Where is where? Anywhere. Anywhere. 
a home, where? A business, an organization, a team, where there is no vision. Any, any place where there is no vision, the people connected to that place will suffer. Any place where there is no vision, matter of fact, matter of fact, the, let, let me just, let's just, just say this, matter of fact, the context here in ver, verse number 18, verse number 18 is sandwiched between what verses? 17 and 19, right? It's sandwiched between, between those, those two verses. Verse 17 talks about correcting your son, correcting your son, correcting your son. Then it says that a son will not be corrected with words only. Then how do I correct my son? Give him vision. See, you think whooping him is going to correct him. You've been whooping him and he's still been doing the same thing. I'm not saying you shouldn't discipline your child, but, but when did you give them vision? Where, where's they, where are they going? Maybe they're frustrated because you, you hadn't shown them where they're going. You have not given them a vision. You've given them a whooping. You've given them time out. You've given them punishment. You've taken this. You've taken that. But you've not given them vision. Talk about where you want to go so that when you see where you're trying to go, then my question to you, the behavior that you're practicing now, is that going to get you to where you say you want to go? you got to get vision that many of our youth and young people, they, they run wild. This word perish, it means they become demoralized. They cast off restraint. They're just everywhere doing everything. They have nothing to guide them. They're just all over the place. Why? Because they have no vision. You have to give them vision. Vision corrects you. Vision brings you into alignment. Amen. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Are the people perishing in your home because there's no vision in that house? Are the people perishing that's on your team because there's no vision? That department, because you have no vision, you're in the leadership position, but you have no vision, and when you have no vision, it's like the blind leading the blind. Amen. You don't marry a guy because you like a guy. Where is he going? Where are you taking me? Where are we going to be in five? Okay. Amen. You, you find, you find, and, and you know you found it when, when you, get that, you get that rib that can help you go where you're trying to go. You just have conversation. You can have conversation with people five, ten minutes and find out if they can help you get to where you're trying to go. And many times we miss, we miss our rib because we're looking at thighs, breasts, and legs. It's going to take more than some legs to get where I'm trying to go. Amen. One wheel. Come on, one, one wheel. One wheel. One wheel. Ain't no slab of rib when you come to that. Ain't no slab. Now, notice what he says. So let's, let's, let's move on. Where there is no vision, the people what? Perish. Para in the Hebrew. Para. Where the people, where, where there is no vision, people para. Now, what does that mean? Listen to this, people of God. It means to let go. Where there is no vision, the people let go. There's nothing to hold on to because there's no vision here. They'll let you go because you don't have vision. I can't get no help. Where there's no vision, the people ignore. I don't want to hear you talk. You ain't going nowhere. You always say we're going to do something and we never do it. So they ignore you. They let alone, they avoid, they neglect. But, but I love this. 
I love this. Listen to this. You'll like this. It means, para means to lead. Say to lead. What does that mean? Here's what it means, Frank. Where there is no vision, the people lead. You the leader, but you led by the people because you absent a vision. This is so good. We're just talking, right? Let me, let me, let me make way here. I'm going to jump over some things here. <laughs> vision is seeing what could be. Just because you have sight doesn't mean you have vision. Sight comes from the eyes. But vision comes from seeing beyond what the eyes see. Is possessing the ability to see beyond what you see. The perpetual experience of seeing past your present. See, vision gives you future despite what your present may be. Now, so let me piggyback off what I talked about when I talked about you belonging here. God sets members in the church as it pleases him. See, a lot of times we kind of give God our description of what we want and a pastor and all of these kind of things. And I, I guess that's fine if that's what you want. But, but the Bible said God sets members in the church as it pleases him. So when it comes to connecting, getting planted into a place. Because let me tell you something. You don't belong everywhere. No, no, no. You don't belong everywhere. And, and that's, that's okay. You just need to know where you belong. Because we, none of us belong everywhere. And I just need to know where I belong. I just need to know my place. But the place you, you belong in, that's where you fit. It's like a hand in a glove. You, you fit that place. Man, you'd be somewhere else raising all kind of, you know, trouble, and you just problematic and, and all that. And then, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, you know, as a pastor, I've been pastoring Word of Restoration for 20, 22 years, would be 23 in March, and, you know, and, oh, that's one guy I'm thinking about. This guy was here, and it seemed like he just couldn't get plugged in. Just, I mean, he, he, great guy, great guy, just couldn't get plugged in, and he ended up leaving and going to another ministry. And the ministry that he goes to, I go there and speak, and I go there and visit quite often. And I see him, man, he's plugged in. He plugged in, he's serving, he has a lot of responsibilities, things that he's doing. And I just look at, what, what happened? He found where he fit. I don't go over there and, and not halfway speak to him and, yeah, you left, huh? Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm glad he found his place. Come on, I'm, I'm glad he found his place. And, you, and when, you, when you find that place, man, you get in. You get in. Amen? So God sets members in the church as it pleases him. So when God places you in a place, God is thinking about his pleasure. God says, okay, it pleases me to put you here. Lord, I don't want to be there, but this is what pleases me, though. And so we're trying to... We're trying to please ourselves at the expense of God. But God knows where you fit. God knows where you belong. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, when God places you in a place, I want you to know you have grace for that place. You have grace for that place. That's why. Now, there is no perfect place. There's no perfect place. And, and as I've heard them say over the years, if you find a perfect place, don't you join. <laughs> you just messed it up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but 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 there is there is grace for the place that you're in. God gives you a grace. You are stewards of the grace, the manifold grace of God. There is a grace on your life. See, think about this. I don't know where you live, but you may drive a distance. And someone else may say to you, I, I just couldn't drive that far. But see, I got grace for it. 
The drive don't bother me. See, the drive may not bother you because you got grace to be in your place. You have to know when God places you in a place, he gives you the grace to be there. So when the pastor says something you don't like, you come right back the next week because you got grace to be there. And grace will always override your feelings, override, you know, he didn't have to say that, or he didn't have to say it like that. No, your, your gra grace overrides all of that. Say, I have grace to be where I am. You got grace to be in that marriage. That's why you ain't left. You didn't found out she's not perfect, and she, fo she found out a long time ago you're not perfect. <laughs> but you're still there. Why? You have, you have grace. That, listen, listen. So the person you're married to, that other folks saying, I couldn't be married to them. But they don't have the grace for it. You got grace for who you are married to, and nobody else needs that grace. Matter of fact, don't even look over here. You don't even have grace for this. No, you find somebody look. Baby, keep walking. He ain't got grace for you. Go on. He ain't got grace for you. <laughs> but that's grace to be where you are. That's why you can thrive where you are and not just survive where you are. Let me, let me move on. God guided you to where you are. God guided you to where you are. Whether somebody told you about the church, whether you passed by the church, whether you saw a billboard, or whether you saw it on Facebook, social media, whatever. Uh, it, it doesn't matter whether you came for uh, a baby dedication, and then next thing you know, you found yourself coming back to this place, and you got connected. God still guided you to the place. God will guide you to the place where you're supposed to be. The other point under that, God setting people as it pleases him, you're gifted for the place that you're in. There are some of you out there, you are so gifted. But see, you've been downplaying your gift. You've been talking yourself out of the use of your gift. Your gift will make room for you. But your gift can't make room for you if you hide in your gift. If you're sitting on your gift, what do you do? What can you do? What do you have a desire to do? What do you feel called to do? Hmm. This is so good. Let's, let's go to Luke chapter 10, and, and we'll get ready to close. Let's open this text up. In Luke chapter 10, anybody getting blessed by what you're hearing? Yeah. Come on, say, I belong here. Yeah, you got, you got to tell yourself that. I, I belong here. I belong here. Paul sent, Paul, Paul, as an apostle, Paul established churches, and Paul had opened up a church in Crete. And, and he set Timothy there in that church. And when he set him there in that church, um, he came back and he said, he said, man, that church is, that place you put me, it's, it's all out of order. You know, they missing this, they missing that. And he just went all down the line telling Paul what was wrong with it. You know what Paul said to him? That's why I put you there. <laughs> Tighten it up. And could it be all the complaints you had about an area, you were there to help tighten it up? See, you ain't like that. That didn't go over too well. You ain't like that. But no, could it be that's why you're there? Come on, you got to have the attitude if I get in there, I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna change. Now I ain't talking about going to try and take over somewhere. That ain't don't don't get it twisted. You all up in there trying to take over. That's not what I'm talking about. But but I'm here. I'm whoever the leader is, whoever the leader is, I'm gonna get next to the leader and we let's let's tell me how I can help. You know, because I'm good at organization. I'm good at organization, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. You know, I can do some other things to help. Just just tell me where you need me, because I'm ready to get plugged in. Because it don't work till you plug it in. This is so good. All right, Luke 10. I'm going to read verse 30 through 35, but I want to just talk you through 
25 and, and 29, talk you through it. So a lawyer is asking Jesus a question. He's asking Jesus a question to tempt him. He think he's slick. But how many know you can't slick the Lord? <laughs> he, he, he think he's slick. He think he's slick. So he asked Jesus a question. He said, Jesus, how, how can I in, in, inherit eternal life? Jesus shot back at him. He said, what the law say? Jesus didn't give him an answer. What the law say? Because Jesus knew he knew the law. What the law say? You're a lawyer. What the law say? He said, what the law says, I'm to love the Lord my God with all my heart and all my soul, all my strength and all my might. And my neighbor as myself. Jesus responded again to him and said this, well, do that. That's what Jesus said. Just go and do that then. But he, got, he tried to get slick again. He said, but Jesus, who is my neighbor? See, people who don't want to do something always got questions. It's just always, always another question. You answer that question, yeah, but let, let me ask you something else. You just don't want to do it. So Jesus answers that question with a parable. Look what he said. And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to, to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment. They, they took his clothes off of him. And wounded him. They hurt the man. And departed. They left, leaving him half dead. The man laying there suffering. And they're gone. You see it in the text? All right. And by chance, there came down one of the elders from the church. A priest that way. And when the priest saw him, it's one of the elders. What did he do? He went, man, I'm going to the other side. I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to the other side. Now, he just left church. I'm going to the other side. It got nothing to do with that. <laughs> and likewise, the Levite, watch the Levite. When he was at the place, came and he looked in on him. Hmm, that's just a shame. <laughs> you, know, he, he, you know, they need more parking attendants out here. Yeah, you know, I had to take my child back because they said they ain't got enough partner in the children's church. And the Bible says he went on to the other side too. But a certain Samaritan, we call him the good Samaritan, but the Bible just calls him a Samaritan. He's not the good Samaritan because none is good but God. He's a Samaritan whom God flows his goodness through. All right? Now watch this. As he journeyed, he came where the man was. He saw, he saw what the priest saw. He saw what the thieves saw. He saw what the Levites saw. But when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him. Watch this. Bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on, on his beast. Watch this. And brought him to the hotel took care of him. And on the morrow, when he, when he left, he parted, he departed, when he departed, he took out two pence. He took out, out, out his own pocket. He took the money out, and he gave it to the host at the hotel, at the inn, and said unto him, hey, take care of this man. Take care of him. And whatever you spend more above that, he said, when I come back, because I'm coming back, I'm not, a, I'm not a hit and miss Christian, I'm coming back. And when I come back, if you paid anything above that, he said, I'm going to take care of it. Y'all see that? Y'all see that, right? Now, so, now what does this have to do with vision? Everything. Say everything. everything. Here's what we're going to look at as we close. Because I'm on, we, you're going to find yourself in what I'm about to say. All right? Because there are four people in this narrative. And we're going to find out which one you are. Tell your neighbor, say, you look like number two.
Let's look at the man. Let's look at the man who has been attacked, who's been stripped, who's been robbed, left for dead. Let's look at him as the local church. He's the local church or the vision of the local church, all right? That man is the local church. That man is the vision. That's the angle we're taking. Now, let's look at then how we respond to the local church. I'm going to give you four responses here. And it's not my job to determine which one are you. It's your job to, to know which one are you, all right? Now, the first response is that of the thieves. My question is, are you a thief? Here's what the thief did. The thieves attacked him. They attacked a the man. There are some people, that's, that's all they do is attack the church. I'm not talking about television. I'm not talking about media outlets. I'm not talking about people in the world that don't understand the things of God and have no value and appreciation for the things of God. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people sitting in pews and attacking the church. That everything you have to say about your church is negative. Always what your church is not doing. You just, you just strip the church. Somebody trying to have a good conversation about the church, then there you go, child, look. I, I'm a member there. And, you know, I, I hear what y'all saying, but see, y'all don't know. Y'all don't know Apostle like I know him. See, and what are you doing? You're trying to strip somebody of, of a good name, trying to strip somebody of the character, trying to strip somebody of their integrity. All you do is attack, you attack the church, you attack the church, and then you leave it half dead. In other words, it doesn't matter to you what, what happens to the church. All you do is attack it, what you have to say about the church. Now, whether you're a member of this church or whether you're a member of somebody else's church, if you're visiting here, you should not be attacking your church. You don't attack where you eat. If it's that bad, then why, why are you in that place? If it's, if it, I mean, what kind of sense does that make? You, you attack, you attack this, you attack that, you attack programs, you attack the vision, you, you attack the way things are done, you attack, you know, you just have a variety of things that you constantly attack at the local church. You attack the vision, why are they doing it like that, why are they doing it? You, know, you have all of these attacks when it comes to the local church, and you strip it, you wound it. Somebody was probably going to come to the church, but when you finish talking, they said, no, I ain't going over there. I was going to go over there, but I'm glad I ran into you. <laughs> See, is that, is that you? You know, don't, don't answer. Just, just look at me. Just, you know, don't, I, ain't trying, I ain't trying to call you out. But, but, but do you attack this church? You got you to gotta think about that. You have to search your heart on that because if you attack, because see, a thief is concerned about themselves. All a thief wants is what a thief wants. You just, just take. Some people are just takers in life. That's all they do. They just, they just take, take, take until they can't take no more. Stories told of a man who was drowning. And he, he drowning. I mean, he, he down for the count. He's drowning. And the guy's on the boat. And the guy's saying to him, man, give me your hand. He going to, blah, blah, blah. He, uh, blah, blah. he just going, to, man, man, give me your hand. I'm trying to save you. Give me your hand. And he, blah, he, blah, he, blah. he go back on again. He about to drown. And then the guy in the boat with him, he say, he's a taker. If you keep saying, give me your hand, he, he'll never reach up. Tell him to take your hand. And he told the man, he said, take my hand. The man reached up and took his hand. <laughs> Some people are just taken. And, and that's all they respond to is taken. And you have to be careful to make sure you're not, number one, you're not just taking from your church. Amen. Let's look at the second person so we can move on. Second person is the priest. 
the priest. Are you number two? Here's number two. What did he do? He avoided the man. He just went all the way around. He avoided it. Just, just avoided it, you know. Well, it ain't got nothing to do with me. I mean, I, mean, I, I agree. They need to get some more people in that, in that nursery over there. I don't even go that way. Yeah, you're avoiding it. <laughs> are you avoiding the ministry? Are you avoiding, are you avoiding responsibility? Mm. Your responsibility to the ministry. Right? If this thing weighed 2,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds, if one person tried to move it, how much does it weigh? If two people tried to move it, how much does it weigh? If four people tried to move it, how much does it weigh? The weight never changes. But the more people who grab it, the weight gets distributed evenly. It's easier for four people to move something that's 2,000 pounds than it is for one. And you have to make sure that you're not, you're not avoiding. Avoiding the call of the church. Avoiding the appeal of the church to get involved and have more partners. The more partners we have, the more we can do. And watch this, people of God, you will win. That's all that's going to happen. You will win. I had a board meeting last week. Had my board meeting with the board here in the church. Our annual board meeting last week. Watch this. This is, this is the point I'm making. This is the point I'm making. We've had to, we've, that, we've had to even now, now we have... 13,000 square foot building next door for our children's ministry. And they have a lot of classrooms. They have their own sanctuary. But all the classrooms are not filled. But we turn children away. But you still got classrooms. Well, we're not turning them away because we don't have space. We're turning them away because we don't have enough partners. Because we have to be able to adequately care for children. Right? Watch this now. I want you, want you to get the point because it's going to make sense to you. So I had a board meeting last week, and in my president's report to the board, I have to go over all the numbers and things like that for the ministry, all that. And so when I get to the membership numbers and all that kind of thing, so, and, and, and a record is kept of everybody who attends service here on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis. They count numbers in here. We keep, we keep, we keep count, we keep record of, of everything. And so... I was giving the board the reports, they put it on the graph, staff put it together, yada, 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 all of that. We had, last year, walked through the doors. Now, this is not individuals because if I come across, this, across the threshold, then that's multiple times I'm coming. But the number of times people walked across those doors, 57,316 people. How is it we have 57,000 people, not people, but 57,000 times we come in here and we can't get 20 people over there to serve. Somebody avoiding. See? And when you are losing, like in Luke chapter 5, when the net break, they call for partners. Why did they call for partners? Because when the net break, they was losing fish. And so before we lose all the fish, we got to have partners to come help us. So when we turn children away, I wonder how many families we lost. Because some families don't just, okay, well, I'll just take them over here. Some families get right in their car and drive right off. I wonder how many we lose because somebody's avoiding. Let's move to the next one. Number three. The Levite, what did he do? Ignored it. He ignored it. He looked at it. Yeah, they, they shout. <laughs> he just, but he ignored it. What, what, what call has gone out that you've ignored? And don't tell me we don't understand commitment. 
because some of you in here, you're soccer, soccer moms. You know, some of you, some of you, some of you coach, you know, uh, little league football, and some of you brothers, you you coach things. You don't don't tell me we don't understand commitment. But see, we we have to make sure we're not always putting God last. God, if I can get to you. You can be on that football field every Saturday or, or whenever, whatever it is, or, or whatever you do, whatever you do. You, you may be the, the driver for all the kids. You, you drop them off. But then you won't drop your child off here for rehearsal. See? Well, what time they rehearsing? Well, don't they know I have to but you take them to the field. And I'm not, I'm not, and listen, listen, people, see, this, this is the only time I get to talk to you like this, we're doing vision. So, but I'm not knocking you having your child involved in different, that is, don't miss the point. Don't miss the point. I'm not saying that your child, you know, I have grand girls. I have grand girls and, and they're involved in a lot of things, but we're not, we're not going to do that and forget about God. See, we can't, we can't get to God, you know, the, I get to you, Lord, when I, when, I, when I can. But now when I get sick, Lord, I need you. When something happened, Lord, I need you. And the Lord said, well, but your church needed you. My house needed you. All right? You know I love y'all. But, but no, watch it. I love you all. But what a restoration. God has been too good to our church. For us to be as slack as we are sometimes. I'm, all I'm saying, we just got to step up. And watch this. You don't have to serve every Sunday. You don't have to serve every week. If you just serve once a month, say, you know what? I can help out once a month. That's amazing. Let's look at the Samaritan. Everybody want to be the Samaritan. And you may be the Samaritan. Let's see, though. The Samaritan... Here's what he did. He supported the man. He supported the vision. He looked in on him. He saw it. He said, hey, I got to do something about this. I'm just not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, just not going to walk by. I'm just not going to ignore the challenges of my church. That's my church. That's my church. That's where I get fed. And so I'm going to do what I can. He supported him. How did he support him? And I'm done. Here's the first thing he did. He resigned, because if, if you're going to be a Samaritan, you have to resign from self. Jesus told the disciples when he called them, if you're going to be all in, first thing you got to do is deny yourself. Can't keep putting the Lord on hold. Can't keep putting the Lord on hold. And so, you know, with, with all the men in here, there are a lot of men in this church, and I thank God for that. Men follow leadership, and I respect every man in here. I've never, I've, never disres I've never disrespected a man in this house. I've never put a man down in front of his wife. Now, I take him in the corner and say what I need to say to him, but I ain't going to say it in front of her. I'm not going to do that. But there are, a lot, there, are, there are men in this church. I'm talking about men. Amen, and I respect that, and I respect you. But with all the men in this church, now this is just this service. What about the first service? It was almost full. Why we don't have enough men in the parking lot? See? Why we don't have enough men in the parking lot? Why we don't have enough men serving in the youth ministry? Because what our young people need to see is male leadership. right now so you have to resign from self that's the first thing we have to do as a pastor I have resigned from self I make a lot of sacrifices for what I'm called to do and I love it I get calls you know car salesmen don't get calls three in the morning they shouldn't be you could tell them call me during office hours well when I get a call like that I can't say call you call me during office hours no, Apostle, this happened, this going on, this. Hey, let me pray with you. See? 
but I've resigned from self. Now, not at the expense of my family suffering. I'm going to take care of my wife and take care of my children and my grands. But not at, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, Help you have the good life and me miss out on the good life with my family. That's not God's best. All right? Now, but you have to resign from sin. Second thing, he reflected the Savior. What do you mean he reflected the Savior? Here's the question you have to ask yourself. What would Jesus do? Because Jesus didn't walk by needs. Jesus met needs. If he saw you blind, he stopped. If he saw you hungry, he stopped. If he saw you lame, he stopped. If he saw you crying, he stopped. Are you walking by the needs of your church? Reflect the same. Number three, the next thing, rearranged his schedule. He rearranged his schedule. This guy was not out just joy riding on his beast. This man was going somewhere. He was going somewhere. That's why he said, look, hey, I mean, I can put you up tonight, but I got the road. I'm on my way somewhere. I got business to take care of. Now I'm coming back through tomorrow, and I'll take care of what I need to take care of, but I, but I got to keep moving. That's why I try not to tell our staff, when people come and people volunteer, you make sure you organize. Don't waste people's time. If they're going to come up and volunteer, they need to be able to come in, do what they're going to do, and, and get out. Don't be, well, let me see. Let me, let me find out. No, that ain't how you do volunteer. You're supposed to have it already lined up. Oh, thank you for coming, brother. We, right over there. That's your pile. <laughs> you, can't, you can't make a volunteer wait. Okay, so he rearranged his schedule. Rearranged his schedule. Can you fit God in your schedule? Number four, he rendered his service. He gave his service. You can give of your service. You know, if, if you're married, of course, those of you who married, you know this, she wants you. She liked the washer. She liked the dryer. They match. She liked the new car. and all. I mean, she, she liked it. She liked the house. But she want to know when, when you're going to spend some time with her. I mean, if she, if she you know. <laughs> rendered his service. That's what he did. He rendered his service. And then, number five. I think you'll like this one. You, you might like this one. Let me see which side is going to like this one. <laughs> it's, it's in the text, y'all. It's in the text. You know, I ain't going to make it. It's in the text. What's in the text? About? He released his substance. Come on, you saw it. It was two pence. He released his substance to help the vision. And, and, we, and when we release our substance... For the vision, we're honoring God. That's what it is. It's honoring God. Now, you've been here any amount of time. It's not a begging church. You know, I ain't beating you up over, over no money. All, all, you, you know that. You know, you, know, you know how we move here. God loves cheerful givers. You work that out with God. But I have to remind you, too, that you, you release your silver. You release your substance to God. How many live in a house? <laughs> I mean, I know that, but yeah, put your hand up. <laughs> Look like they would know because you love the God, you love the Lord, they wouldn't ask you for no money to stay there. <laughs> I mean, you go look at a nice house, you and your wife, and Oh, y'all, it's just a beautiful couple, and yeah, we just got married. Oh, praise God, y'all just got married. Yeah, yeah, y'all need a home. This is a wonderful home here. This is a nice home for first starters, and is this y'all first home? Oh, praise God. Y'all just look like y'all just made for each other. Praise God. They say, yeah, this, this, the one, this the one we want. 
Okay, now this one here going to cost. <laughs> and notice you don't go, oh, that's what this is about. <laughs> now, 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 now you go, I, I knew you was coming with that. I knew you was coming. See, we don't get offended with that. We expect it. When I go to the car lot, I expect it. When I go other places, I go to restaurants, I expect it. But see, we, we get offended in the house of God. We act like we don't expect to give. We don't expect to honor God. But when you give, you're honoring God. You can't beat God's giving. Amen. You can't beat his giving. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, were you, were you blessed by what you heard? Come on, say, Apostle, I needed that. Yeah, sometimes we just need to be reminded. We just needed to be reminded. I think it was a great atmosphere, great environment to just remind you. We have to be reminded. Amen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Father, we thank you for the vision of this house. Thank you for the people, the families, the individuals, married, single, whatever their context may be. Father, I thank you that you've allowed me to shepherd your people. And I don't take it for granted. I don't lord over your people. They're your heritage. They belong to you. And thank you for entrusting this position to me. And Father, I've handled even this day. I've managed this day and managed this message with integrity. No hidden agendas. No manipulation. No deceit. I've given it just like you've given it to me. Because it's your word. And Father, I thank you for the change and the fruit that's going to come out of it. We believe as a ministry we'll lack nothing. We'll have everything we need. We'll have partners in abundance. We'll have an abundance of resource. And Father, we'll be able to do everything you put in our hearts to do. We'll build the city. We'll do everything you called us to do. We'll minister to children. We'll minister to youth. We'll train leaders. We'll do everything you called us to do. So I thank you for support. Thank you for current supporters. I thank you for new supporters. And so, Father, now for the opportunity for people to give their lives to Jesus, I thank you. You already know who they are. And you've sent them here today because you wanted to bring them into your kingdom. If you're here today and you've not given your life to Jesus and you want to, if you're here and you need to rededicate your life to Jesus, you're here, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you're here, and you want to join this ministry. I think I've been clear on what this ministry is all about, and you believe that this is the place for you and your family. Then I want you to stand to your feet, and I want you to come forward. So if you're here, and either one of these invitations are for you, will you stand and just come forward at this time, wherever you are, all over this place. Just come forward. Just come forward. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise. Anybody else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Just come forward. Anyone else? Just come forward. Wherever you are, whoever you are, you say, that's me. I need to join this ministry. I want to get saved. I want to give my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, if that's you, just come. It's between you and God. No pressure. We'll wait on you. Thank you, my sister. Come on. Yeah, we'll wait on you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. They're coming from the overflow. They're coming from the overflow. Just come on. Yeah, we'll wait on you. Just come on. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, just come on. Yeah, just come on. Yeah, they're still coming. Just come on. Thank you. Anybody else? Anyone else? Anyone else? If that's you, just come on. It's personal, it's between you and God. No pressure, just you and God. Amen. Can we give all of them a great big hand clap of praise? Glory be to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
we want to say thank you so very much for being obedient to the Spirit of God and for trusting us with this process. No person can come except the Lord draws them. And the Lord has drawn you. And I want to thank you for not resisting him, but responding and yielding to him. Now, the Bible says when one person repents, that means to change his or her mind, the angels in heaven, they start rejoicing. I want you to know there's a personal celebration going on for each and every one of you. The angels does not wait until everyone come and start rejoicing. Every time one changes the mind, the moment you change your mind, say, I'm going, the angels start rejoicing. The moment you change your mind, the angels start rejoicing, so on and so forth. And we do not want to be left out. We want to rejoice and celebrate you along with those angels. So what a restoration. Can we join in and celebrate them? Just for you, sir. Just for you, ma'am. Just for you, sir. Just for you, ma'am. Just for you, ma'am. Just for you, sir. Just for you. Just for you, ma'am. Just for you. Come on. Glory be to God. <laughs> glory be to God. Well, again, thank you so much. We love you with the love of God. And we declare the blessing of God over your life your family, and everything that you put your hands to, may God cause it to prosper. Now, we have another area we're going to have you escorted to. We have ministry partners that's going to escort you to this area. When you arrive there, they're going to ask you one simple question. For what reason did you come forward? You let them know. They are not going to get you in an area and try to suggest something other than what you've come forward for. That way, you're going to leave here with your need met. So again, thank you so much. This is not the first day of the rest of your life. This is the first day of the best of your life. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So if you would turn to your right, these individuals with their hands lifted, those are those partners. If you would just follow them and they're going to escort you to that personal area. Amen. Glory be to God. All right. Well, were you blessed today? Ooh, I was blessed teaching. I was blessed teaching. All right, go ahead and stand to your feet, and we're going to dismiss. Again, thank you so much for being a part of our, our vision day, our vision casting. I trust you can kind of see where we're going for this year. Hey, next Sunday, we'll be back in the big, receiving more than expected. Come on, if you're ready for big, say, I'm ready for big. All right, well, make sure you're here next Sunday because I'm ready to dive back into it. Amen. Coach V won't be here next week. Some of y'all saying, praise the Lord. <laughs> so we, we're looking forward to next week. Listen, have a, have a blessed week. Uh, make sure you keep up with all of our social media platform, everything that's going on, so you can stay engaged and be involved. Amen. Trail Ride Saturday. For those of you who want to be a part of the trail ride, it's happening Saturday. Our equestrian ministry. They're going to be trail riding and all of that, so you'll see that information as well. Raise your hand so you can receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord show you his kindness. The Lord give you his peace and surround you with his favor. Go in the blessing of the Lord. We love each of you, and we'll see you next.